Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's English class. Today, we'll be discussing an interesting topic as a conclusion on a particular topic that we have started a while, and that topic is stress. Here, we have discussed the meaning of stress, how stress is identified in the English language. And after that, we talked about how stress is placed on individual syllable when you are referring to words. That is when you are referring to syllabic stress in a word. We went further to talk about sentence stress, how words in a sentence can be stressed to place prominence or to place emphasis on a particular word. Now, what we're trying to say is that when we're discussing stress in the English language, we look at how a particular word is focused on, or we'll talk about how a word is considered to be prominent when we are making an expression or when we are uh, speaking and uh, when, we are, when we are having a conversation generally. Now, placing uh, stress or placing emphasis on a particular word in a sentence would let the listener realize that there is something important about the syllable or the word that emphasis has been placed on. Basically, it could be for pronunciation uh, or it could be for a reason such that the speaker wants the listener to identify something or to know that there is a particular message passed across on the word or the syllable in concern. So stress, as soon as you have it, is a prominence placed on a part of a word or placed on a word in a sentence as used in expressions. Now, one thing about stress is that it gives that syllable or that word a special form of pronunciation. That is, when you are pronouncing other parts of the word, or you are pronouncing other words in the sentences, uh, the word that is stressed or the syllable that is stressed is pronounced higher than other words in the sentence or other syllables in the word. So anytime you're talking about stress, it means emphasis placed on a particular part on, of a word that is when you're discussing, when you're looking at syllabic stress, or we're talking about prominence placed on a particular word in a sentence when you're looking at stress in um, a sentence. Now, we said that for you to identify words that are stressed in, in English language, content words are the words that are stressed, while structure words are not stressed. Content words are words that can be modified that we know that modification can come to them as a result of what we are talking about. So today we'll be dealing with emphatic stress and that is where our focus will be today. Our focus today will be on emphatic stress. Now, basically when we talk about emphatic stress, what does emphatic stress me. Emphatic stress is the placement of articulatory prominence or emphasis on a word in a sentence. When we make the statement articulatory, that is pronunciation prominence or emphasis on a word, that is by the time we are pronouncing words in a sentence, we place prominence, we pronounce a particular word louder than other words in the sentence. We make sure that the words that we in, would intend to place emphasis on, or the word that we intend to place emphasis on is pronounced louder than every other word that we have in the sentence. So that is what emphatic stress is all about. So emphatic stress is the placement of articulatory prominence or emphasis on the word in a sentence. In continuation, said emphatic stress 
may be used in a sentence to compare, to connect, or to clarify things. That is, when you're trying to compare two things in a sentence or you're trying to compare two ideas in a sentence, you may use emphatic stress on one part of the sentence as against the other one, such that when the listener hears whatever you are saying and the person can notice or observe the prominence in your pronunciation on that particular idea in the sentence, the person knows that, okay, fine, there is a message the speaker is trying to pass across on this idea. That is how emphatic stress is applied in sentences. So if you want to connect, you may find a way of bringing an idea towards the other idea, such that the listener or the reader knows that, okay, an idea is being brought towards this, and this emphasis will help you locate and bring the connection together so that you can have an understandable expression. It may also be used to clarify things. Maybe you're trying to say something and you realize that the statement may sound ambiguous or it may sound clumsy. Emphatic stress, that is the prominence you have placed on a particular word, an idea, or a statement in a sentence can help bring clarification to whatever you have said or what you intend to say. So I want you to put your mind to it that emphatic stress can be used to compare. That is when you are trying to put two ideas together to know which one you're discussing above the other one. Or you are trying to connect ideas together, trying to bring some idea, ideas from somewhere and bringing it to a source that will make the idea understandable or comprehensive. Or you may be using it to clarify Maybe you realize that something you have, you have said is clumsy or ambiguous. So you can use emphatic stress to clarify such by placing prominent, that is by trying to pronounce that particular word or that statement or that idea louder in your expression. Continuation said, so usually emphatic stress singles out the word that the speaker considers the most important. And in this case, even a function word may become stressed. So what we're trying to say is that though basically in the English language, when we're discussing sentence stress, we had said that a content word, a content word is the only type of word that can be stressed. A structure word or a function word cannot be stressed in a sentence. But because we are talking about a special feature in stress placement. So we have said that even a structure or a function word may become stressed. So as to place that emphasis or place that prominence on that word or statement in a way to clarify or to bring light into what we are saying. It may, be, it may, arise, it may arise that what you intend to compare, connect, or clarify is a function word. So all you have to do is to place your emphasis on that word so that you can use that word to bring light into the understanding that you intend to give in your expressions. So when the reason for stating all of this is that basically in uh, some of our external examination, like of uh, the GCE, the YA, the UTA mean, uh, when we are taking our English language or our use of English, it is possible that we we'll come across questions on emphatic stress. Now, I want you to know that getting answers to questions on emphatic stress is the simplest of all. All you need to do is that pay attention to what you are given and try to identify a question out of those that will be asked that will give your original word an answer to the question asked. This is what I mean. We are saying that in responding to questions on emphatic stress in examinations, interrogative sentences will be provided as options. The interrogative sentence that contradicts the emphasized word is the correct option. Now, this is what we are saying. Well, the, the, the basic um, method or the basic uh, uh, approach to answering questions on emphatic stress is that there will be 
a question out of the four questions that you'll be given that will contradict the statement that you have been given earlier. Now, this is how the question is structured. A statement will be given to you, and then a word is either capitalized or stressed. Now, they will not ask you to bring out the emphatic stress or the emphatic question in the options. Now, what you do is that while you are reading through the options, there will be one that contradicts the statements that you are given. That particular question that contradicts the statements you are given is your answer to the statements you have given. Or we can say, is the answer to the question you are giving on emphatic stress. So let us try this example. John's watch is made of gold. John's watch is made of gold. Now, gold is capitalized. That is, the stress is placed on gold. The stress is placed on gold. Now, the first option that we have is this. Is John's watch made of silver? Is John's watch made of silver? The second question is, whose watch is made of gold? Whose watch is made of gold? The third one is, what is made of gold? The third option is, what is made of gold? And the last one is, is John's necklace made of gold? Is John's necklace made of gold? Now, I want to bring something to your notice here. You realize that for each of the questions that is asked, an answer is found to it in the statement that you have been given earlier. Despite that the word we are looking at is gold. And we have to look for a statement or a question that contradicts the word. Now, basically, if we look at the options that we have, the first option says, is John's watch made of silver? Is John's watch made of silver? You say, no, it is made of gold. Now, that will be our answer for that question. Now, if you look at other options, you realize that option B has gotten gold in it, option C has gotten gold in it, option D has gotten gold in it. The only option that does not have gold in its formation is A. So our answer for that question is A. And you realize that if you ask the question, is John's watch made of silver? You say, no, John's watch is made of gold. Now, so we are concerned about the gold as an essence there, not silver. So, but if you look keenly at the other, other question that we have in the statement or in the question, you realize that each of these questions has gotten its answer in the statement given earlier. Let's try option B. Whose watch is made of gold? Whose watch is made of gold? Now you realize that your answer there will be, it is John's watch. So our emphasis will be placed on John. If that would have brought John as the emphasis. Now the third option can bring a question. What is made of gold? What is made of gold? The answer will go directly to John's watch. So the watch there will be the emphasized word. The watch there will be the emphasized word. And then the last question that you have is, is John's necklace made of gold? Is John's necklace made of gold? The answer will be no. John's watch is made of gold. John's watch is made of gold. So that is how you identify your stressed work. So now, but basically for the uh, reason of this topic, all you have to do is when you're given a statement, you look for a question that contradicts the statements you have been given. And from there, you can get your answer as easy as you can. So let's go to another example. 
The statement is, last week's football was very interesting. Last week's football was very interesting. We have option A saying, was yesterday's football match very interesting? Very exciting, pardon me. Last week football was very exciting. Last week football was very exciting. The option was, was yesterday's football match very exciting? Was yesterday's football match very exciting? Option B, was last week tennis match very exciting? Was last week tennis match very exciting? The third one is, was last week football match very dull? Was last week football match very dull? And D, was last week football training very exciting? Was last week football training very exciting? Now, you realize that each of these questions has gotten an answer in the statement. But because of the topic we are discussing and the approach or the method to answer questions on it, we can only look at the capitalized word and we look for a question that contradicts the statements we have been given in reference to the capitalized word. So our answer will be C, because we are talking about excitement, but the option C asks a question that has given us the opportunity to give the statement as an answer. And the question is, was last week football match very dull? And then because it is not dull, we say, no, last week football match was very exciting. So C, option C, will be our answer in that situation. So option C will be our answer in that situation. Proceeding from here, she works at the hospital. She works at the hospital. Now, we have four options that we can work on here. The first option is who works at the hospital? Who works at the hospital? The second one is where does she work? Where does she work? The third one is does she work at the hospital? Does she work at the hospital? And the last option is what does she do at the hospital? What does she do at the hospital? Now, all we need to do is to look for a question that will bring our statement as an answer. We should look for a question that will bring our statement as an answer. So let's try to examine the first question. Who works at the hospital? Our answer will be, she works at the hospital. Now, that will not be our answer because the word she was not capitalized. So emphasis was not placed on the word she. The second option is, where does she work? Where does she work? Our answer will be, she works at the hospital. Now, the word hospital wasn't capitalized. It was not emphasized. So that will not be our answer. The next option is, does she work at the hospital? The answer will be, yes, she works at the hospital. Yes, she works at the hospital. So that has brought a general answer. So that may not be our answer. But the, quest, the last one that says, what does she do at the hospital? Now, this question has directed us to the word that has been stressed, that has been emphasized in the statement. What does she do at the hospital? She works at the hospital. So our answer for this will be option D. Our answer for this will be option D. So lastly for today, this is another example. The old man is a messenger. The old man is a messenger. Just as we have four options, questions that will bring our statement as an answer. Who is the messenger? The question will be, the old man is a messenger. That will not be our answer because the old man is not our point of focus. Is the young man a messenger? Our answer there would have been no. It is the old man who is a messenger. So that is not the 
uh, capitalized one. So our focus is not on the old man. Is the old woman a messenger? No, the old man is a messenger. The first three questions, or the, the, or the, the first three questions are putting our focus on the old man. So the last option states, is the old man a typist? So this question has led us to the statement and to the word that has been capitalized for us to know what who we are discussing or what the profession of the old man is. And then it says, is the old man a typist? No, the old man is a messenger. So D here will be our answer for this question. So that is how you identify or that is how you answer questions on emphatic stress. Don't forget, as we have said earlier, emphatic stress brings us the opportunity or it places articulatory prominence or emphasis on a word such that you are able to identify a word in a sentence that our focus will be placed upon. And then we do this, we place emphasis on a particular word, or we use emphatic stress in our sentences. Maybe we want to compare, we want to connect or clarify things in our expressions or in our ideas towards people. So we use this, and then we from this we know that the speaker is considering the emphasis as an important word in uh in a sentence that's against the rule of uh, sentence stress, basically in the English language, that says that content words are stressed and function words or structure words are not stressed. But for emphatic stress, we can stress any word because we are trying to place a focus on a particular word in a sentence or expression. And then we have said that the approach to answering questions on emphatic stress is that you'll be given a statement and you are given in four interrogative or five interrogative sentences. The only sentence or the only interrogative sentence that contradicts the statement you have been given or the only interrogative statement that will give a contradiction to this word that has been emphasized in the statement given, that would be your correct option. So that is how to uh, uh, approach questions, or when you see questions on emphatic stress, uh, that is how to approach it, and that is how you place answers to them, such that when you meet these in your external examination, you don't have to sweat over it, just apply this basic rule, and then you have your answer on it. So don't forget, generally on stress, generally on stress, stress means a word, or a part of a word that prominence, articulatory prominence, pronunciation prominence has been placed on it such that um, an attention focus is placed on that thing so that the reader or the listener can know that that is what the speaker is trying to refer to or there is a message that the speaker is trying to pass across to the listener or the reader. So that is where we we'll stop for today. I believe in our next class, we'll have another interesting topic to share with ourselves. Thank you for your time. Bye.